Hello everyone and welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. So let's get started. The first items we're looking at are these RGB LED strips. These are using the WS2812B addressable RGB LEDs. I have uh, two strips here. One is with 60 LEDs per meter and the other one is with just 30 LEDs per meter and you can see these are wider spaced um, apart from each other. These are non-waterproof but you can also get them waterproof they just have an extra sleeve on top of the string. So like I mentioned these uh, are addressable so for that they have a uh, data line running across the entire length of the string connecting each LED so that allows you to address each individual LED and control their color. You can cut these uh, to length. You can get single LED pieces and it will still work. The power needs to be 5 volts on these. There are no current limiting resistors. So if you exceed the rated voltage, uh, they will die pretty fast. I needed a few of these uh, LEDs to use on my RC plane because the flight controllers have dedicated pins for connecting and controlling addressable LEDs. I also have this um, RGB LED control module from a previous uh, vlog and I can hook this up and show you how they look. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, a professional manufacturer of printed circuit boards. Their website is modern and has convenient features like easy to use order form with built-in Gerber viewer production process tracking, package tracking, and single button reorder for previous orders without having to upload Gerber files again. What's nice about these strings is that they are terminated with these uh, types of connectors, so you can chain them together uh, and it doesn't matter because there's no current limiting resistors. I have a 30 LED per meter uh, strip chained with a 60 LED per, per meter strip but it doesn't matter, you just need to have a 5 volt capable power supply. So yeah, pretty uh, cool stuff with these uh, addressable RGB LEDs, but of course this is uh, nothing new and you probably already have something like this. My next item is uh, this set of walkie-talkies from Baofeng. It's the uh, BFT3 model and uh, let me get them out of this uh, packaging. At first sight, these might not be special in any way, and to be fair, they are not special in any way except the uh, price they sell for. I got this set for $11, which I think it's a really good value for what you get. They work on uh, UHF 462 to 467 MHz. The output power is uh, 0.5 Watt up to 1 Watt, depending on the channel you are on. There's a set of channel that you are allowed to output uh, at 1 Watt. And you should get some decent range in open field using these uh, walkie-talkies. I know I've tested them in the past week and I was getting a good signal at 3 kilometers open range. You also have the option of uh, setting a privacy code so someone else uh, will not listen on your conversation. They work with uh, four AAA batteries. I'm not sure on the battery life, I need to use them uh, some more but um, so far I've used it like uh, three or four times, maybe 10 minutes uh, each time. And uh, on the bar graph on the display, it doesn't seem to have lost any lines. I think these uh, could be great for those that do not need much range. They could also be great for kids. They also feature a bunch of animal sounds that you can use as call tones. For example, I'm using them on the field when I go to fly my RC planes. And for $11, honestly, it, I think it's an awesome deal and I was happy to uh, purchase a set of these. Of course, one could uh, complain that the uh, construction is uh, old plastic, it's not very ergonomic, it's not rugged, it doesn't have a rechargeable battery or a uh, detachable antenna. But for $11, I'm not going to complain, I'm just going to enjoy using them. And did I mention you can get them in pink as well? Next, I have a pretty interesting item that I've been waiting for some time. It's the AD584 voltage reference module. 
There are several variants of this module and there are several variants for the AD584 voltage reference. The one to get is the AD584LH in a metal can like I got here because uh, this is the one that has uh, more, uh, more stability. It's uh, 5 ppm per degree Celsius and also because they've stopped manufacturing the LH version somewhere in uh, 2012 Supposedly any existing LH variants have already been aged, thus improving their stability even more. However, we should not exclude the possibility of getting a fake or rebadged AD584. For example, when searching for this, I've noticed there are units that have etched info on the metal can, like I have here, and there are units that have silk screened or painted info on the metal can. Which one is genuine? I couldn't get an answer, but what I can say is that mine is etched. Is that good? Is that bad? I really don't know. Uh, and if you have any info, please let me know in the comment section below. I would imagine that it's easier for the Chinese friends to wipe clean and remark one of the seal screen units. It would be more difficult to remark or rebadge one of these etched ones. Mine has a date code of uh, 1339. If that's 39th week of uh, 2013 and they've stopped producing these in uh, 2012, it doesn't sound good. Maybe I have a fake one, I'm not sure. But you know, most of this info comes from the forums, so there isn't a high degree of uh, credibility for this kind of uh, information. So the plan here is to have it measured with uh, some kind of uh, high accuracy calibrated multimeter. Uh, then built it into an enclosure and use it as a voltage reference for the various multimeters I test here. You might have seen this uh, strange looking uh, battery socket and this is for a 10F20 15 volt battery which to be honest I've never used or seen one in my life. These are not easy to find batteries and I would imagine not cheap either so I plan to install a uh, 4S lithium battery to power my reference. You want to have around 15 volts to ensure good stability uh, for the reference because it can also output a 10 volt uh, reference voltage. So there will be another video once I build this into a proper enclosure with battery. If you'd like to get one until then, I got mine from eBay from a seller named Alice. So there is a high chance of getting an identical unit if you order from the same seller. As usual, a link will be placed in the description below. My next item is a uh, compact DVR recorder. So let's get it out of the box. It, this is the um, actual uh, recorder. And we also get a couple of uh, cables inside the box. So this uh, DVR recorder is intended to be um, used with FPV goggles and um, that's for RC pilots, but really anyone can use this as an inexpensive uh, SD card recorder. The price is uh, $15 and look at how small this is. It takes a, um, a 2S battery input through this uh, port. That's usually the balance port available on any 2S pack or 5 volts through this uh, micro USB uh, power. So you have multiple power options and it takes an SD card on uh, this side, up to 32 gigabytes. For the video input and the output, you have this uh, 2.5 millimeter uh, jack and this switch to switch between um, if this port is an input or an output. So after recording, you can switch it to an output and play back the recorded files or play with the settings of the DVR. The only thing I can complain is the way the user interface is working. There are weird button presses to achieve a certain functionality. Uh, you know, the usual interface problems with the Chinese products. But I think I can get past those once I start using it more and uh, learning the buttons. I'm pretty sure you are already thinking of a project where um, uh, you needed to record video on an SD card with some inexpensive compact device like this. Well, if that's the case, you will find a link in the description below for this gadget.
I wanted a uh, magnifier with built-in LED lights, so I searched through the uh, usual eBay, Banggood and AliExpress and found this model. It works with uh, two AA batteries and I have two batteries already inserted into mine. And it has um, 12 LEDs on the ring outside the uh, magnifier lens. It feels pretty heavy, so uh, there must be a lot of glass in here. There is no markings on the product whatsoever, but the eBay listing advertised it as a uh, 30X magnifier. They also showed a new VLED somewhere in this uh, section, but mine doesn't have uh, that, so I'm not sure whether to trust that uh, 30X magnification uh, figure. It certainly has some decent magnification and I think it's going to be uh, useful. Let's try it on, uh, on this chip, see if we can uh, maybe read the numbers. It's pretty hard to get it in, uh, in focus uh, with uh, my phone that I'm shooting a video here, but uh, it does have some uh, decent uh, magnification. You can certainly use this to uh, read numbers of chips and uh, that's probably the main purpose I'm going to use it for. It's uh, also pretty big and heavy, so consider this if you want something uh, lighter, more compact, you should get another model because this one is pretty thick and heavy. And I forgot to mention it uh, comes with this uh, soft carry pouch, uh, which should be useful to uh, protect it from dust and scratches. In previous videos, I showed you the cloth adhesive tape that I use for wrapping wire looms and in general for automotive uh, wiring. But uh, here is another type of tape that is uh, called uh, acetate tape. I'm not sure of the advantages of this acetate uh, tape over other types of tape, but I can tell you that it has this um, uh, finer uh, weaving texture and maybe a uh, more rigid uh, feel. I've seen this type of tape used inside um, electronic uh, equipment to keep connectors secure to a PCB or wires attached to stop them flapping in the breeze. I've also seen this type of tape used to wrap um, laptop uh, wires like the LVDS cable or various DC power cables. And I can also tell you that even for very old pieces of equipment that I took apart and had this kind of tape, it was all intact doing the job it was intended for even after many years. So I got myself one of these to add to my uh, growing set of uh, technical adhesive tapes that I keep in the lab. I can tell you that uh, one of the disadvantages of this kind of tape is that it has this um, adhesive backing and uh, it's going to be a problem to store it without having it uh, come off this uh, roll that it comes in. So I'm going to have to uh, maybe use a different type of tape to just to keep it uh, together in this roll. As usual, there will be a link to this in the description below. A few weeks ago when I was um, experimenting with the uh, speech synthesizer module, I wanted to record its output to overlay it on the video during re-editing to show you the exact quality that I get from the module. But I didn't want to connect it uh, directly to my um, laptop's audio card in case something bad happened to avoid frying the onboard sound card. I didn't have one of these external sound cards at that time, so I just quickly checked the signal with a scope to see if it was okay and then connected it to my onboard sound card hoping for the best. But I ordered um, one of these uh, external USB sound cards to keep it around for future experiments like this. It just has two uh, jacks, stereo output and probably mono input for the uh, mic input probably uses some uh, chip system on chip that handles everything inside the, including the USB interface and it's probably not very good in, um, in specs but for the purposes that I'm going to use it it's, uh, it's going to be uh, just fine. And the last item in today's video is uh, this set of five active buzzers. These are surface mount, they work at uh, 5 volts 
they are supposed to output um, a 2.7 kHz signal at 82 dBs. We can quickly check that. I'm just going to solder a couple of wires and uh, hook one of these to my uh, bench power supply. So we got uh, more than 90 dBs from, uh, from this buzzer, which is more than the coated figure uh, from the eBay listing. But uh, this meter is measuring uh, dBA, which is a normalized uh, value, uh, normalized according to the uh, ear uh, frequency response, um, while the coated uh, figure, I think it's not normalized in any way. So maybe the difference is caused by the, the way we are uh, measuring, but still, uh, I'm pretty sure this, uh, this buzzer uh, meets its output spec. It's uh, pretty loud for how uh, compact it is. I, uh, I like it. That was all for today. Thank you for watching. Links for all of the items shown in this video will be in the description below. I hope you found something interesting to order in this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments below. See you next week.